Chapter Eight of And Thus He Came by Cyrus Townsend Brady. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter Eight The Broken Hearted. One of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side. I'll get that man if I die for it, said the soldier. He's found the one position in the lines from which he can fire into our trenches. It's easier said than done, remarked his comrade, and the minute you cross that spot you come within his range. He'll put a bullet through you before you can level a rifle or press a trigger. I'll not go that way, said the man. What is your plan? You know that salient yonder on the right? I'm going out of the trench there when now i'll wrap myself in white that little run of coppice will cover me until i get within a few feet of him then i'll have to chance it wish i could help you old man i'd like to get that man he shot six of the best fellows in the company and you can help me by making a diversion to attract his attention keep him looking at that alley a few moments later the soldier shrouded in white crept out of the trench and noiselessly rolled down the slope to the bushes the snow was deep on the ground there was no touch of colour about the soldier he even thrust his rifle under the linen in which he had wrapped himself outside the shelter of the trenches the wind blew with terrific force it was terribly cold he had discarded his overcoat for freedom of motion only his indomitable resolution kept him alive he locked his jaws together to keep his teeth from chattering the ice-covered snow under his bare hands almost blistered the flesh as he crept along he intended to use the bayonet if he shot the man he was stalking alarm would be given and he would be riddled with bullets before he got back he was willing to give a life for a life, if it were necessary, but he was reluctant to do so if it could be avoided. Cold steel would be better. Cold steel. He smiled grimly. It would need some hot blood to take the chill off the bayonet at the end of his rifle. Slowly, almost holding his breath lest he be noticed, he edged his way along. He had plenty of time for thought this was not so easy a job as he had fancied not the physical part but the mental strain he could shoot a man who was shooting at him he could batter a man over the head who was trying to do the same to him but this stalking a man in cold blood was different somehow cold blood he laughed soundlessly at his recurrent fancy he went a little more slowly and finally he stopped to consider from the nook ahead of him in which the enemy had ensconced himself came a sudden rapid rattle of rifle shots his friend back in the trench was doing his part the man was awake on the alert it would be something of a fair fight he thought with some little satisfaction he surveyed the intervening space beyond the coppice the men in the trenches on both sides would be awake too it would take him a few seconds to cross that space and get at the man he was stalking could they shoot him before that there was some shelter where the enemy was if the stalker could get to that spot he would be protected for a moment from fire from the enemy's trench it would take him a second or two to cross that space in a second or two what might happen well he would have to risk that at the very end of the coppice he gathered himself together and rose slowly to a crouching position another rain of shots came from the nook the man's rifle would be empty he must give him no chance to reload now it would be a fair fight with the bayonet he threw aside the white draperies that impeded his legs and in half a dozen bounds the two men were face to face no shot had been fired yes the magazine of the man's rifle was empty he heard the crunch of his enemy's feet on the snow he rose to his feet his bayoneted rifle extended the two barrels struck with terrific force the men swayed drew back for another thrust and they were suddenly aware of a mist-like figure between them a figure draped in white lightly diaphanously they stood arrested guns drawn back and stared 
the figure slowly extended its arm carrying drapery with it a man's breast was bared there over the heart was a great gaping wound fresh as if a broad heavy blade had pierced it there was a clatter on the ice as a gun dropped and another clatter as a similar weapon struck the stone opposite the two men bent forward their hands outstretched they took a step as if to touch the figure and there was nothing there the hands met they clasped warmly in the cold against each other my god what was that said the stalker i don't know answered the other a pierced side was it no it couldn't be well we worship the same god and ah they were seen there were quick words of command from the trenches a staccato of rifle shots and two bodies lay side by side hands still clasped while the snow reddened and reddened beneath them and it was christmas eve End of chapter 8